Psalms chapter 15, a Psalm of David. Now this Psalm is a Psalm of works of the Old Testament salvation and not the church age. And we're not saved by work. We're not looking for Jerusalem. We're not looking for the Holy Hill. The Jews were. The Jews were promised a piece of land. The Christian is given is promised New Jerusalem. And yet when I say that these works are a salvation of the Old Testament, they would be properly for the Christian to be our character. What we don't do, what we do do, not for salvation, but for a good testimony of the Lord. And a lot of things in, in the law, okay, yeah, we're not under the law. But it would be well advised if we didn't commit adultery. It would be well advised if we didn't commit a false uh, uh, witness. It would be wise to honor our parents. That would be all proper things. But we wouldn't do those things for salvation. Now the land grant. There is one group of people, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the descendants, that were given a piece of land. And they get the new earth in the eternal life. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? And that's that tabernacle David says over there in curtains. Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Jerusalem. Zion. Well, the Jews. And Pacific Jews that we're going to read for verses 2 on. David, who loved the Lord and the priests who were supposed to do right, would not allow just anybody to enter into the congregation and into the Listen, the law prescribes certain people were to go in that tabernacle and some people were not allowed. Even the priests and even the Levites. And it's funny because later on, Joab would run in there, grab hold of the, 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 the horns of the altar, and Solomon declares him to be killed. And uh, one of David's sons who usurped the authority of the... Before Solomon, he goes and grabs hold of those those uh, horns at the altar. Because, you know, whoever touches the horns, the Bible says, are holy. When John the Baptist's father is in the holy place and he's preparing the incense for the prayer, he sees this man, doesn't have wings, and he freaks out because there's no one else belongs in here. I'm in trouble. Until he realizes it's Gabriel, the angel. So who shall abide in the holy hill? He that walketh uprightly. That would be proper for the Christian to do right. Not because we would be saved by doing right, but listen, how many people have you dealt with? How many people have I dealt with? And, and you're witness to them and they give you a poor testimony of some Christian somewhere. Well, that's someone who's not living upright. And work is righteousness. Now, our righteousness is Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he was made sin for us who knew no sin, that the righteousness of God may be in us through him. The Bible says that there is none righteous, no, not one. And yet the righteousness of the, of the Old Testament saint was well, he brought the animals he was supposed to bring to the tabernacle. He did what he was supposed to do. Speaketh the truth in his heart, not just his mouth. Wasn't a hypocrite. And too many people in the church, you know, they're double tongued, they're double heart. They'll say one thing to a Christian or to a pastor, and then when that person's not around, they'll back they'll backbite them. It's work. He that backbites not with his tongue, and I just said that. Gossip. Talk about, complain. You were not to do that under the law. We ought not to be doing that under grace. Nor doeth evil to his neighbor. And that would be perfectly proper for any Christian. Well, I'm trying to get my, my neighbors saved. I'm trying to witness to my neighbors. And you're treating them like garbage. You're treating them like a heathen. You have no regard for him in his stuff. Well, he ain't going to listen to you. Nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor. 
in whose eyes a vile person is content. You, you stay away. But he honors them that fear the Lord. We ought not to be vile. We ought to have a clean testimony of serving the Lord and doing right. He that answers to his own heart and changes not. Where I got my Bible. Changes. Sunday money, morning. I'm holy. I'm righteous. I'm a Christian. Monday afternoon, you're borrowing lottery tickets, picking up a six pack of beer, and heading off to your, your your friend's house to go have a party with your friends, and just leaving your family. Tuesday, you're at work, and and you know what? You're anything but a Christian at the job. Wednesday, you you know you you're not at church. You're at a ball game. Then show up back Sunday again. Oh, I'm holy. Changes is, you know, you're, you're one thing and you're another thing. That ought not to be so for a Christian. And for the, for the Old Testament Jew, you know, he, he brings that offer. Oh, yeah, I'm so, I didn't mean to do the sin. And you go right back out and do the sin all over again. You know, do you believe those people were lying? You? You know, it's that. It's that Pharisee, you know, Lord, I am not like this guy, the hypocrite, I'm not like this guy, you know, all this, and look how holy and great I am, I fast, I give my money, blah, 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 blah. That's not right. You gotta fear the Lord. We ought to fear the Lord. We're saved going to glory. We ought to still fear the Lord, fear the Lord, because you know what? People are watching us. Saved people are watching us, and lost people are watching us. I would hate to have anybody at the farmer's market see me during the week acting like acting like what they do. I want them when they see me to not put a pretense on, not to be a change of attitude, but, you know, man, that guy is, is who he is there, and he's who he is there, and he's who he is here, and he's who he is there. Not, oh, he's one of us. And he's just a holy roller on Saturday. Probably a holy roller on Sundays if he goes to church. He puts not out his money to usury. That was forbidden by the Jews to, to give usury interest charge on loans to other Jews. That's the law. Now, if I had a bank, I'm a Christian, and somebody from church came into my bank and says, I want to borrow money, I have all right under the grace of God to charge him usury. If I could, if it's my bank, I'd maybe charge them a little less interest if I could, but the Jews couldn't do that. That was forbidden in the law. A Jewish person goes through, can I borrow 10 bucks? Here you go. Here's the $10. He comes back and says, well, all right, here's the 10. How much more do I owe you? That's it. Now, the Jews were allowed to charge the Gentiles usury, but not other Jews. That's the law right there. That's what this whole chapter is about. Nor take his reward against the innocent. Bribery. Or he gets paid for a testimony. He gets paid to outdo someone who is defenseless. Somebody who is incapable. I'm going to get money so I can get off you. That's not right. And that's also in the law. He that doeth these things shall never be removed. Removed out of what? You try to tell me if this was Christian. Let's say you got a Christian. He's a worldly Christian. He doesn't do right. He's got a poor character. You mean that God's going to move him out of New Jerusalem? No. And this is where the conflict comes. Well, I can lose my soul. See, if I, if, if I sin, God's going to move me. Uh, this is, again, this is Old Testament. Moved out of the land. Now, what happened to Judah? What happened to Israel North when they did sin and they sinned against God and God sent them prophet? They lost their land. Judah went into Babylon. Israel North went into uh, Assyria. 
You know why? Because they did not obey chapter 15 of Psalm. They did their own things. They sinned against God. And God said, okay, get out. The Christian, if we do these things, God's not going to say get out. God's going to say, okay, that was wood, hay, and stubble. It burns up. It's ashes. That's your law. Come on into glory. Now, if you get a right to the millennial inheritance and all that, I don't know. You don't get no crowns. We get crowns, inheritance, reward, and we get well done. Thou good and faithful servant. I want to hear just well done. A Jewish person in the time of David could, you know, a lot of these offenses were? They were a capital offense where you lost your life. Or even worse, when if you died committing some of these things, you went off to hell. Now, I'm a saved Christian. I've been saved since April 21st, 1987. Let's say if I. Let's say I started charging people interest for money. I become a loan shark and I, I outrageously give people interest. I'm still going to New Jerusalem. You can't stop that. Let's say if I did have a double heart, and I do have a double heart at times. I'm sorry to say I'm a Christian. Sometimes I, I do change. I'm a Christian. But I've sinned. If he if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. That's not so in the Old Testament. That's not so in the, in the Old Testament salvation. And I bet you if David were to find out, you've done wrong. You have sinned against God in the town. I bet you David got rid of you right You're out of here. This is the song he wrote. And this is a song. This is what you say. This would be a Old Testament de -churching. If you don't do what you're supposed to do and you live a vile life and no pastor, no deacons would ever de-church a Christian based upon these one, two, three, four, four verses, four or five verses. You say, Pastor, why are you de-churching me? Because you have you have usury of other people working for the bank. We're going to de-church you because you've done evil against your name. No. That's not offenses against the church. It's things that the pastor should deal with. But you would not de-church somebody unless they just didn't get right and got vile and vile. But in the Old Testament, you come walking up to the gate where the priests are and you have an animal. No. You're not de-church. You're de tabernacle No. You're vile. If those priests were living right and doing what the law told them to do, no, you're vile. You're wicked. Can't have you. There's a vast difference between Old Testament salvation and New Testament salvation. There's a vast difference in what the, the Old Testament Jews were to do and Gentiles and to what the New Testament saved Christians. Now, we do these things here, not for salvation, but for a good, clean character. If somebody comes up to you in church and says, you know, I listen, I need groceries, I, I need rent, my, my water bill, here you go, brother. Here you go, sister. And when they come pay you back, I wouldn't charge them interest. That's foolish. You can if you want to, but I wouldn't. Say, you know, here's the $50, I'll owe you 20 more. All right, 50 here's 30 Here's 30 back. Go out to eat or something. Are we supposed to be loving? Aren't we supposed to be giving? But the Old Testament law is too. More stricter. 